Speaker, uh, the Green Party has taken an interest in this bill and will be voting against it. And there we, have, we have had no major problems with the parts of the bill that many people have discussed here in the House today. Particularly, we have no problem with the issues around police vetting of, of home care, home educators and home care workers, or with the issues around information matching for the Teachers' Council. We do not take issue with those issues, and we feel that they were well improved by the work of the Select Committee. We are consistent supporters of legislation that rationalises things in a common-sense manner, particularly around issues of vetting tradespeople in relation to their work inside school communities. And I would agree with the speakers who said this is a delicate matter, and that it's difficult to strike the right balance, but I do think it's important that these issues were addressed and that this bill goes some way towards addressing them. Same with the issues of um, registration and fair management of teachers, um, but we do have some concerns about what the bill calls minor changes and what other people feel were non-issues. And in fact, perhaps our role in this parliament, maybe like the Māori Party sometimes, is to raise issues that other people consider to be non-issues because we have a broader vision that requires us to look at the underlying ideological issues and what is missed out on in the so-called minor changes and who is not being addressed in the so-called technical bills that sometimes get put through this House with a great deal of rhetoric about their ordinariness. We do not feel at all comfortable about the increasing trend which is signalled in this bill around changing governance of schools via boards of trustees. And we do not feel comfortable about an increasing trend towards public-private partnerships and corporate control over the governance and management of the public school system. We do not celebrate the possibility in the future of a wonderfully flexible Pepsi-Cola high school or any other future manifestation of the privatisation of the public system or the school funding and management. And we are well aware that some of these clauses which seem inoffensive relating to the combining of boards or appointing a corporate body with an accountable individual manager, which is what we were debating in the Select Committee, we weren't debating, um, the parties were debating apart from the Greens over the issue of an accountable person. That's what they were debating. But what our challenge was was around the concept of corporate management. We had a very lively debate on the meaning of these clauses in the Select Committee and the Green Party remains unconvinced but the claims of other parties that schools already have this kind of management and everything is fine. We are concerned about any further privatisation of that environment and we may have to stand firm and alone in our rejection of this. The regulatory impact statement claims that this is just a technical tidy up. However, it's interesting to see who attended select committees. And we had submissions from the uh, former member of this House, Liz Gordon, from the Quality Public Education Coalition, who made sufficient submissions opposing the combining of boards of trustees and also on the issue of appointing a body corporate whether or not there's an individual who's made accountable or not. That organisation had concerns. So although we may stand alone in this House, we do not stand alone in the community. We have educators who also are signalling their concerns about these underlying issues. We would agree with some of the points made by the previous speak speakers for Labour about the or Labour's original amendment and how it did add clarity to the responsibilities of members of boards of, of trustees around issues such as enrolment. And it is regrettable that those things are not not in this bill, although not the primary reason why we are opposing it. Like the Quality Public Education Co Coalition, we do believe that it's important to look at boards of trustees themselves in relation to their communities, and we also are concerned that these corporate bodies, whether they are um, accountable through an individual or not, are not required to have a strong and proven educational background, although I'm sure some of them do. They are not required to, but presumably to be efficient business managers, which is not actually what a school is. It is not a business. There are t these two issues that we would c pursue around the combining of boards and the an issue of management of schools. And we do think that tomorrow's schools does need a review process, but not in terms of the kind of underlying issues in this bill. Tomorrow's schools is not, was introduced supposedly to give communities more control. Tomorrow's schools, in retrospect, can also be seen as a, a clever way to impose costs and burdens on boards of trustees and parents and teachers under the guise of greater community direction, which of course worked well for wealthy school boards with accountants, lawyers and financial managers volunteering from the parent pool, but imposes huge burdens and stresses on impoverished communities, 
and some in rural areas and communities where English language, let alone English bureaucracy and fundraising skills, are not the dominant par paradigms. And I'm speaking from experience here as a member of a small school board of trustees. And so if we're going to talk about combining schools, we, we, it all sounds very logical to pool skills, but we also, as Liz Gordon pointed out at the Select Committee, need to think about the integrity of community and the access of local people to relationships, even though, as I am saying, tomorrow's schools is not perfect. But because tomorrow's schools does need review, that does not mean bring on the combined school board and a corporate manager. We do not believe this, and we would like to see tomorrow's schools become much more about the participation of parents and communities without unfair imposition of ideas like bulk funding and an increase in the social inequities that this, the current system has already started to open up. And our concern is that um, although there weren't a large number of submitters on this bill, uh, there was that underlying concern from some of the submitters about the communities being able to exercise real control if boards of um, trustees are combined, and about the resources that, that less wealthy communities have at their disposal. And so, like ourselves, some of those submitters were concerned about the body corporate model. And I, I don't feel it was resolved by the negotiations in the select committee about having an individual to be accountable, because individuals can bring with them the ideology of their communities or of their corporates, and that's where we are, we are expressing strong concern. Because the public funding and commitment to schools being more than businesses is fundamental and needs to be expressed in all the legislation to do with education in this House. And the commitment to schools being more than businesses and, and standing for education for its own sake remains an absolutely central part of the Green Party's policy towards the education system. And so despite the, the technical matters that we do support, we stand to oppose it on that basis. And we stand to support the people who've made submissions to sector committee asking us, if alone in this House, to stand up for public education at all times and to recognise at all times that the corporatisation of education will not benefit our nation or our children. Kia ora. Rahui Katini. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The issues affecting the education...